Thank you, Justin. Now we wanted to look deeper into Brandy McCaslin's history and we found recent court documents regarding a custody battle between her and two of her children's fathers. Two News Oklahoma's Shay Smith went through court records and custody orders and shares the details with us tonight. Shay. Court records show on January 26th, nine month old Billy Jacobson's father and Noe McGee's father both filed for temporary emergency custody orders for the children in Rogers County. Documents say it was in the best interest of the children and the order that was granted says the court reviewed documents and found irreparable harm could occur if not granted. Both orders were granted by different judges. Court documents show McCaslin had supervised visitation with Noe on Saturdays between 9 and 5 and Wednesdays 3.30 to 7, along with any other agreed upon date. The documents say McCaslin was allowed to see Billy every Saturday or Sunday from 9 to 5 and every Monday, Tuesday and Thursday from 8.30 to 5. All of those visitations were also required to be supervised. Records also show Billy's father requested the court to appoint a guardian at Lydum to represent the baby. The cost was to be split between Billy's father and McCaslin. On June 7th, the court ordered McCaslin to submit a nail bed drug test within 24 hours. The records show she was also ordered to undergo a psychological evaluation. A status conference for that was set for August 9th, less than three weeks from the day of the murders. But it wasn't just the court documents we found. A GoFundMe page details other struggles McCaslin was facing. On January January 26th, the same day the emergency custody orders were granted, a GoFundMe was created for McCaslin by a friend of hers. The GoFundMe says in part, my friend moved into her grandparents' home because their health has declined majorly. She didn't know at the time that they had let the house payments lapse, and McCaslin's grandpa passed away in January. In an update, the GoFundMe says they are no longer financially able to keep the house. It went on to say her grandma had another heart attack and now has 90% blockage in her heart. They will be sending her home on hospice. Now, I did reach out to the woman who created that GoFundMe and have not heard back. In studio, Shay Smith, 2 News, Oklahoma.